Welcome to the penultimate race of our F1 1975 mini season as we're visiting the final European destination in this series. Today we'll race at Monza and it's here where championship leader Emerson Fittipaldi could already claim the second driver's championship in a row. We will of course keep a look out for the fight at the top but we will rather race in the midfield as we're starting as Vittorio Brambilla in his home race for the March team. Can they score their first First points here today. One short note on the layout we're using, this is actually not quite the track used in 1975, which already had a chicane ahead of Cova Grande and the Ascari chicane was already there as well. The layout we'll be using is the one from 1971 though, the even faster one without these chicanes. So prepare for some very high speeds as we will take a look at the starting grid now. And Emerson Fittipaldi, the man that could win the championship here already, starts from pole position and alongside is the pretty luckless so far, Nicky Lauda. Then we have Patrick Depay, James Hunt, Clay Regazzoni, Tom Price, Carlos Parcher, Ronnie Peterson, Jack Yeggs, Jean-Pierre Jarrier. Uh, these are the top 10. Then we start from P11 and behind us is Jody Schechter and Carlos Reutemann, the other main championship contender, the Argentinian in the Brabham with a Pretty disappointing qualifying. Mark Donahue then is in P14. And then we have Jochen Maas, Dave Charlton, Guy Tanma, Bob Evans, Chris Amen, Rolf Stommelen, Mario Andretti, Graham Hill, Lala Lombardi, Wilson Fittipaldi, Turium Masario, and Eddie Kazan from 26th and last. And here we are on the grid in P11 in our march. And it is lights out and away we go for the 1975 Italian Grand Prix. And it is an okay getaway. Here the track tightens up a lot as on the right hand side you would go on towards the Monza Oval. We won't do that. Instead we go through Cova Grande. Side by side with uh, Jackie X. Alongside us, that is Carlos Reutemann as well, who has a lot to do, because if uh, he doesn't score points, all Emerson Fittipaldi needs to do is finish uh, uh, second to win the championship. Third would just not be enough. There still is a very outside chance uh, for Reutemann in the final race, but if Reutemann does not score... Second would be enough for Emerson Fittipaldi to claim the championship here. As towards Parabolica we go, we get a fantastic run through that left-hand kink in place where today's Ascari chicane is. We move past uh, Jarier and the Lotus of X. And now we are already close to that leading group. Fittipaldi and Lauda currently battling for the race lead as we enter lap 2 or as we are about to enter lap 2. Let's see how we're running right now. Fittipaldi leads ahead of Lauda, Hunt, Price, Peterson and Depaye. And we are currently running in P9, one second behind Carlos Parch in 8th. But the group ahead of us, this is everyone from P1 up to P8 and has been a fantastic start by Carlos Reutemann who was already just behind us but now we are looking at a replay of uh, the race start and it has been a fantastic start for James Hunt in the Hesketh, the white car with the number 24 that is or seems to be going first into Curva Grande and actually yeah he is. Fittipaldi trying to move past the Englishman around the outside towards the first Lesmo Fittipaldi, oh, a little bit of dirt kicking up there Tom Price running in fourth, Depaye couldn't use his uh, great starting position to stay with the top guys here And now Lauda is getting a very good run here on Fittipaldi. Ooh, Hunt is a bit offline there. 
And then towards Parabolica, it is an absolutely fantastic run by Nicky Lauda, who is alongside and past Hunt going into the final corner. Oh, and Fittipaldi has a look down the inside as well. He moves past Hunt uh, as well. And now, side by side, they leave the Parabolica, and now it's Fittipaldi ahead. Fantastic opening lap here with the lead changing three times. Oh, and there it is, Lauda once again in the race lead. But we are now looking at our race once again. Uh, just before we were looking at that replay, I mentioned the fantastic start that Carlos Reutemann had, who already moved up three spots and is now in 10th, just behind us. And uh, he looked like he was going to attack us. Oh, now he is attacking us into the parabolic as we are a bit early on the brakes. And then Carlos... Reutemann moves past ourselves, currently sitting second in the championship, five points behind uh, reigning champion and championship leader Emerson Fittipaldi. Oh, and we can't even take advantage of the slipstream so far up front. This has been a bit of yeah, an oval race, maybe even, with... Uh, Multiple cars battling for the race lead, taking the slipstream and uh, yeah, taking turns and leading, pretty much. So, uh, slipstream very, very powerful today. Reutemann, in the meantime, has moved up through the uh, field ahead. This is Ronnie Peterson we're currently alongside. Now we are a bit blocked uh, between the... Lotus on our right and the Brabham of Reutemann just ahead. Tom Price in the shadow is in there as well. Oh, sad for Price that he now had to drop back from the leaders a little bit. We moved past Peterson but now out of Parabolica the Swede is getting a good run. Oh what has happened now? He had to drop behind there a bit. Probably some issues with switching the gears. And now we are getting a very good run on Tom Price in the shadow. We are alongside going into Curva Grande and we are ahead of Price. And now following Carlos Reutemann once again, who is now in seventh, just behind the point scoring positions. So maybe he can pull us uh, through the field. And if we can stay with him, I think we could still get a very good result and maybe even finally the first points for March. But now we had to leave a bit of a gap to Roy Tuman and we are vulnerable to Ronnie Peterson just behind us, who moved past Price as well. We defend, staying on the inside towards that left hand bend. And now towards the Parabolica we go. Trying to defend the inside. Peterson has a little look around our outside. But that did not work for the Lotus driver. And we stay in P8. But now with a little bit of a gap to the cars ahead. And yeah, we have been running pretty much in no man's land today as we just enter lap 16 3.7 seconds we are behind Reutemann who is still in seventh who also wasn't able to move up uh, any further so we are now oh oh we have a little moment into the uh, cover grande oh no no we spin out and oh that is a uh, quite a heavy impact severe damage to our car now and I am afraid. Ah, damn! That is that is it for us. We retired after that crash, and let's see what happened. And oh, we took just a little bit too much curb on the inside. That unsettled our car with the right rear tire. We mounted that curb, and that sent us straight into the barrier on the outside. And then we spun across the track. Lucky. To not uh, spin into the way of Jody Schechter. And um, yeah, then hit the opposite wall. And now, let's rather watch what is going on at the very front 
as there is still a four car battle for the race lead. Carlos Pache just took it away from Lauda as they cross the line and now Lauda drops down to third as Regazzoni has a fantastic run towards Cover Grande or could it even be a Ferrari 1-2 for now? Lauda is now a little bit blocked by his teammate Pagina once again in the race leads. Emerson Fittipaldi in fourth, biding his time, waiting for his opportunity. Now he has a little look down the inside into Lesmo 1 against Nicky Lauda. Oh. Bit of contact with the wall for the Austrian that has had so many DNFs this year, mostly down to the car. Last time yeah, in Austria we were messing it up for him and now oh no it seems like he has an issue once again he is slowing Niki Lauda is slowing down from leading this race entering this lap he now has dropped out of the points Hunt is passed, Depaye in the terminal is passed and Reutemann now is passed as well Niki Lauda slowing down immensely and I'm afraid yeah he is going to pit and he is once again due to a technical issue retiring this car but this is now the man of the moment this with Lauda holding up these guys is the chance for Carlos Reutemann currently second in the championship to move up into the point scoring positions and now he is up to P4 he just moved past James Hunt and Fittipaldi has lost touch with the top two as well so now when this looked like quite a controlled affair when it looked like he was easily going to extend his championship lead over Reutemann because he uh, was running outside of the points well now he might be facing an on-track battle with his main championship rival for now. Reutemann still has to defend from James Hunt just behind him. But it is looking like he can do so. And now this is of course opening up another championship decision with both Brebham's now running in the point scoring positions and only one McLaren and one Ferrari being in there. Brabham might actually be able to take the Constructors Championship here. Side by side, Reutemann and Hunt going through the Parabolica and now they're both getting a fantastic run on the Brazilian and reigning champion in the McLaren. Reutemann, now he moves past Fittipaldi. And now from extending the championship, he would lose one point off his championship leads as it stands right now and James Hunt is right there with him as well. In the foreground there is a fantastic battle for the race lead between Carlos Pace and the other Brabham and uh, Regazzoni in the sole remaining Ferrari in this race who's trying of course to give the home crowd something to celebrate even if both of them both of their drivers are pretty much out of the championship and the Constructors Championship might be slipping away from them now as well with a Brabham running in first and third. Fittipaldi also lost position to James Hunt now so this is two points that Reutemann would be gaining so a three point gap going into the final race of the season but this is this is well it is changing lap by lap as now James Hunt looking around the outside of uh, Reutemann but now this has made him vulnerable to Fittipaldi who moves past once again and he's up to fourth a fantastic battle here between the main championship rivals and James Hunt as well who also had a bit of bad luck this season running very much at the front in many races and only for his car to let him down just like Nicky Lauda but now lately Hunt has been scoring some good points for Hesketh and he is maybe looking for a podium finish here as well in that exciting battle for third 
Oh, a little look into the second Lesmo. That does not work. Way too flowing that corner. But now with the slipstream pretty much running flat out now towards the Parabolica. That kink, you don't need to slow down for that either. And now... They're approaching the Parabolica, three wide once again, Pacho once again defending the inside against Regazzoni, and he should take uh, the race lead once again. Or remain in the race lead. And these three still running in the same order as well. But it does not matter who is at the front now. What is important is who is at the front in the end. It's just four laps to go now here as the top two just lapped the Embassy Hill of Graham Hill. And Regazzoni has taken that uh, to his advantage and is now in first in the background. You can still watch the battle for P3. Pacha now down the inside into the first Lesmo. Oh, not close enough. He's just not alongside Claire Regazzoni. Now on towards the back straight they go. Pacha around the outside. Pacha also with mathematical chances to still win the Drivers' Championship. So Brabham is really having a fantastic season here. Once again, side by side they are approaching the Parabolica. Clay Rigazzoni has the preferable inside line. Pacha tries to stay with him around the outside. But that did not work. Clay Rigazzoni. When they cross the line it will just be three laps to go. And Pacha once again back in the race lead just as they cross the line. In the background Reutemann still in third. Ahead of Fittipaldi and Hunt. Oh, and now round the outside ahead of the Parabolica. Fantastic move by Regazzoni in the Ferrari. He retakes the race lead, but now once again, oh, he pushes Pacha right to the edge of the track, but he is still there. But uh, only goes second into the first Lesmo. That is. Must be one of the closest races in Formula 1 history and it will be a, a, in, an insanely close finish as well. There is barely a tenth separating these two. Now Pacha once again edging into the race lead round the outside of that fast left hand kink that leads on towards the straight towards Parabolica. Oh in the background Fittipaldi has retaken third or has he? Side by side with Reutemann, they go into the Parabolic Apache, stays in the race lead. Now there's a bit of a gap, but Regazzoni once again able to take the slipstream. Fittipaldi has retaken third in the background. But there is Reutemann already attacking him once again. And Regazzoni retakes the race lead into Curva Grande this time by taking the inside line. Now side by side they approach Lasmo. Oh, they're still alongside each other. Please leave the space and Pache this time edges ahead. As in the meantime, we've already seen that in the background. Reutemann back into third. What a battle. For first, and what a battle for the final spot on the podium as well. An exciting battle for the race lead, and a fantastic battle between the championship leaders. For third, you don't know where you, you want to watch, because there is so much going on right now. Three wide in the background, two wide in the foreground. As they're about to enter the final lap of this race. Pace will be the one 
that enters the final lap in the race lead. But there is still one more lap of Monza to go for everyone. Lap 26. Barely two tenths separating Pachi and Regazzoni at the top. Hunt has taken fourth away from Fittipaldi, who's down in fifth. And Regazzoni takes the race lead through cover ground. Side by side, they still are going. I guess Regazzoni has the preferable line as they go towards the Nesmo. He's slightly, slightly ahead. Oh, and in the background, there is still a battle of full P4 going on. Reutemann seems like he has that third place secure right now. Oh, Reutemann! Uh, sorry, Hunt and uh, uh, Fittipaldi still going side by side. Hunt just ahead right now of the Brazilian. But now, side by side, they go. Rigazzoni was able to defend through the Lesmos. Now they go towards that left hand kink that is the penultimate corner already. Now it's all about car positioning. And Rigazzoni will take the inside line. Fittipaldi's back in fourth. Reutemann looks safe though, but side by side they're entering the final corner, this is unbelievable! Regazzoni has the inside line for now, but now he is going to be dragged towards the outside. Pacha tries to switch back, it is all about the exit and acceleration now, they're both on the throttle. Who is going across the line first? It will be a photo finish, unbelievable and has been Carlos Pache, but only just... I think it has been Carlos Pace, slightly ahead of the Ferrari of Regazzoni. What a finish to the Italian Grand Prix 1975. And here are the results of today's race. Carlos Pace wins ahead of Claire Regazzoni and it has been just four one hundreds of a second. Incredible finish, a photo finish decided this race. Carlos Reutemann then finishes in third. What a comeback story for him. He made up 10 places throughout this race. Fittipaldi, disappointing from pole. He dropped down to fourth. James Hunt, fifth. Once again, good points for Hesketh. And Patrick Depay scores the final point for the Tyrrell team. He had to drop back then in the end. And for the Drivers' Championship, that means that the gap between Fittipaldi and Reutemann has dropped down to just four points. It were five ahead of this race. Carlos Pace is right there as well as he is just five points down on Emerson Fittipaldi. Uh, and then everyone behind them is mathematically out of this championship. Claire Regazzoni in fourth. Jackie X an impressive fifth. Nicky Lauda disappointing sixth. And then the Constructors' Championship. Um, I have mentioned it that it was the opportunity for Brabham to win the championship here already and that is what they have done with a fantastic finish of first and third. Uh, they are now uh, unbeatable in the Constructors' Championship anymore with just one race to go. McLaren is in second, they still have Ferrari to worry about, and then it is Lotus, Hesketh, Tyrrell, Parnelli, Shadow, Penske, and Ambassy Hill, so these are all the constructors that have scored at least one point throughout the season, and yeah, that has been it for round 7 of 8 of our F1 1975 mini-season. There is still one more race to go, where we will see the Drivers' Championship decided as well, and this will be the United States Grand Prix at Watkins Glen. We'll see this race at the beginning of next month. Um, yeah, so subscribe to not miss the championship finale, and uh, yeah, I hope to see you all there, and uh, until the next time, goodbye.